Hello, welcome to the Apollo Tom channel. Today I'm going to partially recreate a video I made what was now about 10 years ago showing an RTLS abort of the Space Shuttle using Orbiter 2010. I'm going to continue using Orbiter 2010 for this demonstration to keep it similar to that previous video I recorded. I have now fixed the screen recorder software, so the quality should be a lot better this time. In this video, I'm going to do a complete RTLS abort rather than the simulated version where a further engine failed and then the third engine failed, resulting in splashdown. This will be a successful RTLS with just one engine failed. So, very unceremonious start, as usual in Orbiter. You just press the keys and it goes. So, we're clear of the tower. And rolling. Roger, roll discovery. got the single engine failure happening pretty early into the flight so it would be a forced return uh, no other abort modes available at this stage that's just the throttle down but there the center engines failed so we've got it about 35 seconds and what would happen now is mission control would call up discovery abort RTLS and I'm now flying manually and I've stopped the pitch over at the previous rate and I'm now pitching over a little bit more slowly to try and retain some of the altitude control. So I've initiated, initiated the RTLS but at the moment that's the main difference. Um, really it's just a case of altitude control. The speed downrange is something of a side effect at this stage. We'll be considering it later, but at this stage we really just want to maintain reasonable climb and get some height. Because when we pitch back round on two engines, and that's the dangerous bit, Coming up on SRB SEP. SRB is dying off now. We've got Ohm's assist there, and the shuttle's also initiated venting Ohm's propellant. That'll reduce the weight slightly and give us better acceleration. So we're quite high for this speed. I think we'd normally be going faster downrange at this altitude, but I've pitched over more slowly to try and get that extra altitude. And uh, starting to pitch over a bit faster now there, as we reach the kinds of altitude we want to be at, about 120 kilometers. Once we're at that altitude, I'll just pitch up again to maintain it and continue burning the fuel off while we go down range. And then it's just a question of judging the pitch back over so that you null that downrange speed and hopefully end up 
using all the fuel heading back. So I've actually started levelling off at just under 100k there. It would be around this time in a normal takeoff that they'd call a negative return. Because we've already initiated the RTLS, I've got a little bit more time before pitching back over, but starting to make the pitch over manoeuvre there. Didn't quite get as much altitude as I probably would have wanted. Maybe just pitched over a little too far. Really just more or less holding that altitude now. The shuttle can't quite support its weight on two engines. So this is why this is the dangerous part. Actually, got to burn a little bit more fuel so we're lighter until it can even support its weight. We're just about getting to that point now. Holding that vertical speed but still losing a bit of height. Stop gaining downrange velocity. Really just hovering in mid-air almost, but still moving away from the space centre. Now light enough that we're just starting to stop sinking. And in a moment that'll allow me to actually start pointing back towards KSC. just starting to slow down so we're still moving away but less quickly this is the point in the flight where the RCLS is a dangerous maneuver there's a lot of discussion about whether it would have worked. I think it's pretty clear that with three engines it would have worked. I'm doing it here with two engines and it is working. My shuttle is possibly not loaded to the mass it would be on an actual takeoff configuration because I don't have the payload in the bay. That would probably make the margins tighter probably got a bit more leeway here but with three good engines it's pretty clear this maneuver would work. The danger comes from the fact that if you lose another engine during this phase the shuttle just would not be able to support its weight and it's going at Mach 7 and it's falling fast and that's a dangerous situation. And I think that's what John Young meant by we don't want to play Russian roulette. He's not really saying that the test of this manoeuvre on three good engines wouldn't work. He's probably saying more that you're risking something else going wrong. But this time we are doing it successfully on two engines and we're not going to lose another engine. We're dropping slowly. The engines are firing inside the atmosphere again now, but that shouldn't really be a problem. The engines fire in the atmosphere at liftoff. Dynamic pressure is only 11 pascals. Uh, max Q, it's something like 30 kilopascals. 
it's going to get a little bit higher as we start to accelerate back in a minute but it never gets anything like that high so burning the engines in the atmosphere shouldn't really be a problem what will be a problem is if we sank back downwards a lot faster than this but this is a manageable rate So we're still moving away, we're 900 kilometers downrange, we're a fair old way away. Uh, fortunately the acceleration is really building now, as the tank gets lighter. We're really starting to null out that last bit of downrange velocity now and we're going to start heading back any moment. Still controlling that sink rate, it's at a very manageable rate. Propellant level's really looking scarily low, but it really isn't a problem because we're going to get so much acceleration in a minute, we actually have to throttle down to control it. Down just below 70 kilometres altitude, but the dynamic pressure's almost insignificant now. Subsonic. Just about nulled out that downrange velocity now, and the shuttle is now standing on its main engine stationary, which is a very odd situation at this height. But it really makes no difference to the rocket, it doesn't know it's doing that. And now we're starting to move back. 942k downrange. That's going to quickly start coming down now. This, this is a very long manoeuvre, it would normally only take eight and a half minutes to launch the shuttle. This is going to take about 25 minutes before we're back on the runway. So it's not, it's not extremely quick, but I suppose if you needed to get down in a hurry, it would have been the quickest abort. over a thousand meters a second now heading back towards the runway still losing altitude looks frighteningly low you'd never never want to be this low during a launch but uh, we're not launching we're going downwards so we don't want to be too high when we cut off the engines a few of the trials I've done of flying this mission I ended up too high and when you cut off the engines it just sinks like a stone if you're too high. We're not going to have orbital speed, it's going to be well short of that. Calculated that we're going to be decelerating at round about 1g, so I calculated the speed needed to reach the runway decelerating at an average about 1g, and that works out between two and 3,000 metres a second. I think at this distance away it's nearer 3,000. There we go. That's where, obviously where I calculated it, about 2,600. Dynamic pressure, still only one kilopascal, well below what's reached during the launch, so shouldn't be a problem for the tank. I had to experiment a little bit with separating from the tank. Um, I think the manual says you're supposed to be pointing down at a slight negative angle of attack. When I tried that, that was actually what caused the tank to cartwheel. That may be just a glitch of the orbiter model. Aerodynamic model perhaps doesn't quite match reality, so I've done it with a slight positive angle of attack and that, that's worked okay. Just gone into translation there and uh, used the Ohms engine to get away from the tank. And then this is effectively the re-entry. Uh, it's not a full orbital re-entry, but we're now sinking back into the atmosphere 
I'm going to quite quickly lose a bit of that speed. Possibly could have cut off a bit lower even. There we go, this is about the altitude we're going to be cruising back. 38 kilometres. Still got 2,000 metres a second back towards the space centre. So I want to be averaging about 1g deceleration. It's going to be a little bit more at this stage. It's going to be a little bit lower later. Later we'll have more altitude to trade off. Start making S turns to maintain altitude and not climb. At this hypersonic velocity the shuttle has to maintain a high angle of attack so that's why you have to make the S turns, you can't just put the nose down. Just checking the indicated airspeed there as opposed to the true airspeed. The indicated airspeed adjusts for altitude, the air being thinner. I think it's about 400 meters a second indicated. Might be 400 knots actually, but I think I, I think I went with 400 meters meters a second here, so maybe that was wrong. But uh, at that point, you can then put the nose down. I checked it there, and it was still too high. Still too high. used a lot of the ohms propellant during the two engine phase, um, particularly at the start when the tank was full. During a normal launch the shuttle would use ohms assist just after the boosters separate when the tank's heavy. It uses ohms assist just to get that little bit of extra thrust when it really needs it. I, I left it on for a while so we had the ohms engines going as well as the main engines, the two main engines, and that gave us just that little bit of extra propulsion when it was most needed. We would have had to dump that ohms fuel anyway. Okay, I've decided we can pitch down a bit now. So we've barely lost any altitude really during the glide back and now we've pitched over we're just starting to gently sink back down and we're losing less speed as a result so we've got kind of plenty of energy to play with within 300k of the runway now. rolling again now to manage energy, coming in a little bit hot at the moment.
As we've slowed down more, we're just starting to lose height again. There's this saying that the shuttle glides as well as a brick. Uh, you can see from the velocity vector that this is not entirely true. We're only gliding downwards at less than a five degree angle. Yeah, it's pretty good, really. Um, we're doing over Mach 2, I suppose, so you could do some experiments on how well a brick would glide at Mach 2, but it's certainly not going straight downwards. Just pitching down a little bit more. I might have slowed down a little bit more than I intended there. So just pitching down to keep that speed. Still a hundred miles out. If I was flying this properly by the book, this would be about what we call the terminal area management phase. I'm pretty much winging this. So I'm coming up on the south side of the runway, so I'm going to be landing runway 33. In reality, the shuttle would fly a complete 360 degree plus cylinder, called the heading as alignment cylinder. I never find that works very well when I'm flying manually like this, so I just do a straight in turn onto base leg and an off base onto final. I don't do the full cylinder. You really need the uh, guidance computer to do that correctly, I think. It's pitching down a little bit more on purpose there, because I'm possibly coming in a little bit high and slow. shuttle lands at a 20 degree glide slope. As you can see, we're not gliding downwards at 20 degrees. This Again, this is the idea that the shuttle's a terrible glider. I think the reason it lands on its final approach at 20 degrees is so there's a margin of error. It's got excellent air brakes. If you come in at a 20 degree angle and use your air brakes as needed, you don't run any risk of undershooting, whereas if you came in at the exact glide slope the shuttle can manage, you'd have no margin. I think that's the reason it comes in that steep. I'm really not having to fly that steep. So we've gone subsonic. Just close the map there so I can see the runway, know where we are. It's 
that's the minimal Kennedy installation, just the runway and the building really. Basic launch pads. I think this is about the point I realised uh, may have not been coming in as hot as I thought, so I possibly didn't want to slow down that extra bit earlier on. Speed's starting to drop slightly more significantly now with subsonic. Still not coming down at 20 degrees though, but I think I just started getting a little nervous I wasn't going to make it, so I thought I'd fly a much tighter final turn. Definitely won't be enough for a full cylinder. Checking the angle I need to turn out there. Ten thousand. And probably didn't need to worry. Still doing 160 meters a second, so. Nine thousand. That's over 300 knots. The landing speed is supposed to be 210. Eight thousand. 210 knots is around about 100 metres a second. Still got plenty of altitude. So I'm so high I'm pitching down to below 20 degrees and would have really started to speed up there, but I've opened the air brake. I've opened the air brake halfway, and that's pretty much uh, nulled the acceleration. I've now opened it slightly more, and it's just starting to slow me a bit. So the air brakes are excellent. I'll just show you the actual contact here. Just came up a touch short, but. On the concrete, at least. That's the shoot. And there we go, we're back at KSC. Two engine RTLS can be done, it certainly is possible. Uh, thanks for watching.